fresh face, new space, but not quite. For those of you that are new here, you may not know me, you may not know where we are, but let me fill you in real quick. My name is Mel, I'm your main girl, and I create mains by Mel, because I am a hairstylist. Now when we are in this space, we're not here for me. My hairs are already done, which you can see plenty of times on this channel. Today we are here for her. Come on in, welcoming my sister. Hello everybody. Back with a brand new sister we're video. We're back in the space, we're back in the space. Amanda's elated to be here because today means we are going to fix, oh I'm sorry. Okay, you do that. This is a video that you guys have been requested for a very long time. But now it's finally here because these roots need some help. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit too dark, you can hardly tell on camera. So today we're gonna take Amanda's hair a little bit lighter. But here's the concern. Because she has curly hair, does going lighter mean that it's gonna be damaged? No, 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 no. Let me tell you. Today we're gonna be lightening Amanda's hair using no bleach. Zero bleach, which means minimal damage. Minimal. 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 So allow us to get started, and I'm going to show you guys the whole process of how I color my sister's hair without using bleach. Are you excited? I'm excited. She's so excited. I haven't this. done my coloring so long. She's overdue. So without further ado, let's get to it. Now before I show you the how we do it, I'm going to show you what we're doing it with. And before you get overwhelmed, because there's going to be a lot of things going on here, don't worry, I will also put all details in the description below, and I'm going to be explaining throughout this video why I'm using what I'm using. But first, here we are. So real quick, what you're going to need is tools. So for tools, obviously we will be needing some brushes. This is my favorite detangling brush. This is the Web Brush Epic Professional. And of course, color brushes. These guys are some of my absolute favorite. This is from Fromar. And I love this Big Daddy brush. And what goes hand in hand with paint brushes? Bowls. And very importantly, to weigh out the color, I have a scale, some toner bottles, uh, or I don't really know what to call these bottles, but these squirt squeeze bottles. We'll be needing lots of foils today, and we're gonna need some clips. Now those are the essential tools I will be needing for this process. Now as for products, well this is where things get a little bit technical. I have a lot of products here, and it's just gonna be easier for me to explain what I'm using, why I'm using it, as I am using it. So let us begin with how I'm going to prep Amanda's hair, and Amanda, you can come on in and sit down. Wonderful. So Amanda does regularly clarify her hair and her hair is in good condition. However, Amanda's hair is very, very, very thick and she needs to put a lot of product in to tame this. So one thing I like to do for pretty much every color service is clarify the hair once again but I'm not just using any clarifying shampoo. We are going to be doing a special clarifying treatment that is done in salon to remove buildup. I'm not just talking about product buildup. Product buildup plus mineral buildup, which is the worst kind of buildup, especially when you're doing a chemical color service. So we're gonna wash Amanda's hair and I'm gonna be using one of my favorite salon clarifying treatments, which is the Undo Goo Shampoo from Malibu C. This is a pH 9 shampoo. This is gonna help to raise the cuticle and release any kind of buildup that is sitting in the hair. But we're also gonna go a step further with the ultimate clarifying treatment. So this is a crystal gel treatment. So to do this treatment, all I had to do was fill up one of these squirt bottles and I filled it with two ounces of warm water. You mix the powder in and it creates a gel. So now that I have my crystal gel, I'm gonna apply it to Amanda's hair, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna explain exactly why I'm using this magical tool. 
this treatment is not something that, that happens all the time, but before color service, this is how I, as a stylist, like to cover my ass. And for the client, this is just gonna give you the most desirable color results. Why I am doing this is because it is going to be the deepest cleanse to remove not just product buildup. Forget about the surface buildup. We're getting into the hair and lifting out and removing any mineral buildup, any mineral residue that sits on the hair and lives inside that not only affects the tone of your hair color, but it also makes the lightening and the lifting and the coloring process more difficult and it could potentially, depending on how much mineral buildup you have in your hair, cause a chemical reaction with the hair color and then create disasters. So now that his hair is saturated, it's clipped up, I'm going to seal it all in with this little processing cap. Adorable. Why is this going on the internet? You look so beautiful. Nobody judged me. We're doing this for you. We're doing this for beauty. And now this has to process with heat up to 45 minutes. We're not gonna do that because we don't have hard water here. Madness hair is not that built up. I'm gonna sit it on for 15 minutes and I don't have a hood dryer so I'm just going to use my Dyson and hover around high heat, high speed. Excellent. She is done here. It's hot under here. We're gonna shampoo this out with one more go of undo goo. Make sure it's very thoroughly rinsed. And I'm not gonna be conditioning her hair after. We're gonna get right back up and then we're getting right into highlights. I just wanna warn you that what you're about to see is not pretty, but beauty is pain. This is what I like to call the Hagrid. <laughs> yes. Now that she's fully clarified, it gave me the opportunity to detangle her hair and then brush through so that now her hair is going to be very manageable. So after shampooing, I very quickly blasted dry men's hair because this hair color is meant to be put on dried hair. So let's get you draped. I'm gonna section Amanda now. I'm gonna talk about her natural color and what we're trying to do here while I'm sectioning her out. And then I'm gonna show you guys the product I'm using, how to mix it, and then how to apply it. The beautiful Hagrid special. Let me show you what's going on in between here. So Amanda's natural color, which you're seeing at her roots, is about a level five, six. She's considered the dark blonde, light brunette range, which is why I can use color on her to make her as light as she is on the ends. Now we wanna be matching what's going on in her lightest highlights. She's not trying to be blonde like me. If she was, this would be a different procedure. We would be going in with bleach. But because we're not using bleach, because we wanna achieve a really nice, beautiful, natural color on her, I'm using color. And this is what I'm using today. Today I'm using Wella. This is their special blonde range. So the levels here are 12, level 12. That means this color is gonna take me beyond the lightest blonde, which is a level 10. Basically meaning that this color is much stronger than any other color and it is going to get you nice and light, almost like bleach, but without bleach. I'm also gonna be mixing the color with 20 volume developer. So let me show you guys how I prepare the color. So I'm using an array of tones here, all ranging from violet to ash to natural. I'm mixing this one part color, two parts developer, because adding more developer is gonna fuel the color to get more oxygen and to work faster and get lighter results. That is how this color is supposed to work. When you read the instructions, that's what you do. Mix it really well. She's a tick. She's a tick formula. Good to the last drop. At last, I'm going to begin highlighting. Now you can see we've got these six sections. One, two, three, one, two, three, after being split down the middle. This is my favorite placement for hair that likes to be flipped wherever. So Amanda doesn't have a set part. She usually wears it off to the side, but sometimes she likes it on the opposite side, and sometimes she likes it down the middle. This is the nicest placement for that, in my opinion, and it is relatively fast to work through the hair, and it just gives the best results. 
I'm always working on diagonal parts, following the hairline. Now Amanda's ends are already highlighted. I'm not highlighting her ends again because that would overprocess them. It's a root touch up, so I'm touching up whatever is dark. And I'm going in here with a weave. So that after Amanda lifts her hair up, she's gonna have beautiful highlights in her hairline. Now you wanna accommodate your foil length for how long of the root you are working with. Amanda's roots here are not that long and it's a short piece of hair, so I'm working with a shorter foil and then I have longer foils for the lengths of her hair. You want this right up to the scalp, so I'm folding this over my comb, okay? And I'm getting right into the root and folding that weave over. Pushing up the foil. Now we can see that there. I'm taking my big daddy brush, dip it, and flip it. Highlighting hair is enhancing and highlighting and adding tones. I'm going to show you what not to do in curly hair. Now the trend right now is baby lights. Baby fine highlights that look great in straight hair. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. It's like, it's taking very fine micro weaves literally like individual strands of hair, Amanda's highlights will completely disappear. They'll disappear in the thickness of her hair. It'll be merged with a bunch of dark in between so it won't feel as bright as it is. And it makes it very hard to touch up after without re-highlighting what's already been highlighted, which will cause damage. You cannot highlight curly hair this way because you will not get the outcome that you want. To get the brightness and to show ribbons and colors in the curls, I'm going in with chunky weaves. See those three chunks? That's what I'm highlighting here today. Because when Amanda's hair is curly, you're going to actually see ribbons of curls. And depending on the size of your section, it's going to be around three to five weaves, and they're going to be like thick fettuccines. And the process continues for a very, very, very long time. Amanda. Are you sleeping? She's falling asleep. Okay, so maybe try to keep your head still. All right, freeze. I've reached a point where if I continue going up diagonally, I'm gonna clash with my other side. So I'm gonna finish this little back portion horizontally, and then we'll be able to turn Amanda around and work around the face. You can see there's a lot more dark under here, so I'm using longer foils. This has been a total of 11 foils for this back portion. Not bad. Now I'm going to move to the front and I'm going to have Amanda spin for us over here. Well, there you are. We missed you. So if you see here, around her hairline, there's more weaves. Coloring more individual strands and curls so we can get a better grow out around the hairline. Each section that I'm taking to work on is like an eighth of an inch wide. So I'm not working on like tiny, tiny sections. I'm also not working on very big sections. But this is how I'm going to create dimension in curly hair. It's going to be blended because I'm doing things right. And this will also look good when it's in straight hair, but Amanda hardly ever straightens her hair anymore. If we recall her hair journey, flashback to some photos here. Oh God. Um, Mammoth's hair used to be much, much blonder and much more damaged and not nearly as curly because she was heat styling it much more frequently. frequently. On top of the bleaching that was all done far too frequently with not enough treatments in between and not enough haircuts. Then of course we have gone to Mammoth's hair to this point that you all see today through no such thing as a big chop but just a lot of tender loving care and trims and highlighting with color. Now you may have noticed that when I was mixing, I had some Olaplex there that I did not mix into this color because her roots are nice and healthy. So I don't need to add Olaplex to the color treatment, but I will be doing an Olaplex treatment on her after just so her hair stays healthy as they can be. Okay, so the camera died and we have completed this side of her head. I'm moving on to the other side, and I'm going to go over the most important points here, okay? So, let's let her down. 
Again, just like in the back, I'm always working on this diagonal section following the hairline because when Amanda puts her hair up, she's going to get beautiful highlights and coverage. So I'm taking my sections and around the face, the section is always a little bit smaller and the weaves are always a little bit smaller so that it looks a little more natural. You don't want it to look too like chunky, but everywhere else, I am using kind of chunky highlights. They're thicker weaves because that's what's going to show up in Amanda's hair. That's how you're going to see these ribbons of color. Another very important note is that I do not mix up a lot of color all at the same time. So I only used 20 grams of color to 40 grams of developer. If I mix for her whole head all at one time, the color is going to be completely off because Color has a processing time, and eventually it dies out. So I'm going to be using very old color by the time I get to the top of her head, and it's not going to give you the result that you want. So I only mix up 20 grams at a time, if that. And this is now my second batch of color here, which is actually lasting me a long time because I'm only touching up her root area and whatever is dark that I want to add some brightness to. Oh man. We've once again reached, Amanda, turn around, this triangle in the back of the head. And once again, I'm gonna finish up back here doing that horizontally, and then we'll move up to the front. To the top now, y'all. This is the most important part. This is where Amanda's gonna be parting her hair. Now it's actually usually right over here in this side, right Amanda? Mm -hmm. But again, sometimes she wears it down the middle, and sometimes she wears it off to the other side. But I really want to pay attention to her part side. So I'm going to be starting in the front, and not much changes. So if Vanda looks down, you can see her hairline goes in this diagonal here, and I'm continuing my sections like so. But Amanda wants a lot of brightness up here. So I'm going to be taking ultra fine sections with our medium weave. So I really want to make sure that there is this much hair in between the weaves because when Amanda puts her hair up, she's going to get a really soft, beautiful blend instead of it being this harsh line that just doesn't grow up nice. So this is my third bowl mix. I have now mixed 60 grams of color which is about one full tube. These tubes are actually 57 grams, which is two ounces. So I've gone in with more detail and a finer weave in the first three section of her hairline, which is, which takes us about three quarters of an inch back. Now I'm continuing the same way I was doing the rest of the head. One eighth of an inch sections and more of a medium to a large weave. Basically, the bigger the curl, the bigger section size you want to be taking. Again, yes, this is technically creating chunkier highlights, but that's what you want in curly hair. So after I'm done applying this, we will see how she lifted, and you will see what that looks like at the end result soon, shortly. Wowza! Done? She's done. Hey. We're gonna be very gentle, and we're gonna sit and wait. Now let me check the back, because guess what? The back has now been sitting on longer, and if we check the back here, the color's literally stunning. It's a perfect match, it looks beautiful. Now how do I know this is done? Well, because it's been the processing time. It sat on for over 35 minutes back here. I'm going to start to remove the back in a minute. So I'm going to continue to wait until there has been a total of 35 minutes since my last foil applied to allow everything to finish processing, and then we will remove the foils and put Amanda back in the tub. And we'll come back to go do that. In the meantime, a snack? Yes. Snack? Coffee? Snack. We'll be back, everybody. So to initiate the Olaplex standalone treatment, I'm taking one full bottle squeeze of the Olaplex treatment, and I'm adding it to three ounces of warm water and swishing it around. <sighs> I'm quite broken. But what's not broken is Amanda's hair. <laughs> Here we are with our bond builder. I grabbed a bowl just because the step one 
is so liquidy. It's, it's water. It's basically water. And I don't want it to completely drip and leak out of her hair. So I just took a clean bowl that I have and it's just kind of sitting. Um, you know, this is going to go on for five minutes. And then we're going to put number two, which is more of a cream, directly on top. That will sit for 10 minutes. And then we're going to wash. For the last time, we are here. And I'm shampooing and conditioning with Olaplex number four and number five. And once that's shampooed and conditioned, we will come back with the final result. And now, for my final trick, I call this one the reveal. Oh my God, you're so beautiful, sister. Show them what you made of a blush. What do you guys think? Here we have butter caramel, butterscotch, caramel cream. What will we call this color? I just don't know. All I know is I'll be admiring it from afar and up close at all times. Let's take an up close look, shall we? Let's dive in to the depths of these roots. So natural and perfect on you. We did not shadow root anything. So it's literally just the highlights right up to the root. She is beautiful. Thank you. Good job. You were beautiful before, but you're more beautiful now. So you don't touch the hurt. And that is all, guys. We are finito. Now you finally know how my sister highlights my hair without bleach. So if you like how her hair came out, and maybe if you learned something new today, let us know by giving us a thumbs up on this video. As well as comment below if you want to see how my sister cuts my hair and styles it because that's I think I'm pretty much due for a trim. Yeah, one step at a time. We'll just have to wait for another Tuesday where we post brand new videos each and every week. So make sure you're subscribed and make sure you turn on that post notification bell. And we'll see you guys here next Tuesday. Peace. Peace. Are you excited? My neck's been broken. My back is broken already. We do it for you. Okay. Let's do it. Amanda, what are your lash secrets? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret. Do not shift the foils. Do not move your head. Do not breathe. You know what you signed up for. What? No. I will tell you. You will know when we're done. This is just as fun for you as it is for me. Can you stop moving, please? This is really bothering my eyeballs. Okay, Amanda, we're gonna take it. Too much stuff on my face. Okay, let me help you with that. So, if you are a new stylist or you're someone that's trying out a new color line, use it on family members or. <sighs> there are so many regrets. <laughs> I love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Your neck is broken, really. No! This is what we do for you.